Morning everyone, it's Oliver Joyce here with another Swords and Sandals game developer video update. It's been a while since the last one, uh, about a week or so. Been really busy actually, um, just in life of course, and building the game. Um, we are now in mid-October and I am slamming through the list of um, things I've got to finish off for the beta um, at the end of this month. And there's still a lot more to do, but I'd like to just take the time out this morning to kind of just share with you a little bit of the process of actually how I've been building Sword and Sandals Pirates, because uh, you might find it interesting. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through some of the tools I use and some of the techniques. Um, it's not going to be that long a video, but if you're interested in uh, game development or programming, uh, you might find it interesting to see um, a little bit of how this game was put together. And um, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? And so what we'll do is we'll move over to my um, desktop screen here. You have some lovely trees. It's a random background. And first thing I want to show you is the wonder list. And now this is a very important tool. Um, oh, bring my, there I am. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, so wonder list is a great tool for just getting your game organized and this is a free little um, app that you can get on your PC or your Mac or even your um, mobile device and it all syncs up and so when I'm um, coming up with game ideas uh, for example here's some different game ideas I've got here um, I just write down little lists and of things that I want to um, come up with and that kind of thing they just the bullet points basically but you can um, write down your idea on the phone and then when you get home uh, load up Wonderlist and it's there so it's all sort of cloud saved. With Sword and Sounds Pirates I've been using Wonderlist as essentially just a checklist of things that I need to fix up. Some ideas and so on. It's not really um, sorted through that um, uh, coherently really. It's just basically whatever comes into my head that I need to add or fix. So you can see here um, I've got a list of 56 items that I need to fix up and that's still um, growing and shrinking every day so as I play the game I'll find more things and then I'll go home and I'll fix them and tick them off and then I'll um, add them up again as I play the game find more bugs more things I want to refine so every day I'll kind of go into Wonderlist and go well today I want to work on um, oh the texture memory error on this or um, you know, this bug to do with the land battle, land battle chatter position is wrong. Okay, so that means a little speech bubble above the characters is disappearing. So yeah, Wanderlist is the first tool that um, I can recommend for you to use. Um, this isn't even, actually, this is not really a recommendation video. It's more just the tools that I use right now. Um, of course, this game is made in Flash and Flash Develop. So if we fire up um, Flash Develop here and we load up our project, we can see um, we have uh, Sword and Sandals Pirates. And Flash Develop is a program that I've been using for about a decade. It's a um, free, um, basically an ID for editing code. And um, it's really useful and really simple. It's basically the best I've found, um, the best tool for editing ActionScript, which is the language of um, the game that I'm making. And the other tool is Flash, of course, now known as Adobe Animate, but it's still basically Flash. Uh, in here, I create all the graphics and actually assemble the graphics and layouts for the UI and everything. And between that and Flash Develop, I'm constantly going backwards and forwards uh, to build. So the game itself, um, I have what's called a global vase class. This is a uh, the this is uh, your average class in in Sword and Sound of Pirates, and by class I mean a file which contains all your code. And so this has a whole bunch of variables. Most people are going to look at this and go shocking public static variables, and um, you know build the game how you want to build it. I've been building these games for many years, and I found a system that just kind of works for me. Um, I tend to have a global class with some static variables that every other class can access. This is just for the programmer types who are interested in this. Um, I have some private variables, but in general, I kind of let everything access everything else because I'm the only one that needs this and I know it all works well for me. Um, 
So this class basically determines, um, you know, what's the version of the game? Um, what's the, uh, has the game been set up? Is it, is the demo locked or whatever that kind of thing? Um, all that game sounds, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, there are lots of different classes in this game. There's a class for the weather. Um, and in here I've got, uh, what kind of weather is it? We have it's clear, it's fine, it's mostly fine, light rain, heavy rain, stormy, blizzard, uh, that kind of thing. And I can adjust the weather here um, and change the color of it just by um, this particular class returns uh, what color the snow is. Um, lightning, there's a little function to create lightning, which is interesting. So all the little snippets of code that I write, I sort of divide them up into um, functions that go inside classes. Um, a lot of game developers will tell you that they start off building these projects with the best intentions and um, they mean them to be so really clearly laid out and it's it's all very well sorted. And by the end, it's all just a hot mess. Uh, this game is no exception. I started this four years ago and um, built it in a, in a quite a different um, game actually out of it. It was a solo adventure with uh, quests and a plot. Then halfway through, I changed it and made it more like um, Sword and Sandals Crusader or Civilization with, you know, many enemies all vying for a world. Um, and so there's lots of bits of code in here that um, may not make sense anymore. The quest info panel is no longer useful, so I'll be deleting that at some point. Um, one of the most fun classes is the Tome of Knowledge, which contains all the interesting sort of bits of dialogue in the game. Things like all the sea shanties are here. Um, I knew a little fat kid with sausage finger hands. He'd rob the rich and rob the poor, the lions and the lambs. It's a song about the little fat kid. Um, and we have things like um, how honorable you are. Um, the verbs that you use when you're eating. Had, ate, feasted on, osmosized, enjoyed. All that kind of thing. So there's tons and tons of um, interesting stuff in that. Um, the Tome of Islands contains all the information about the islands in the game, their names. I'm going to scroll through that quickly because that's going to be a secret for the players. Um, that kind of thing anyway. So what we'll do is we'll switch over to Flash um, Animate, as I forget um, it's actually called. And I'll show you, um, say, for example, the characters. So if we go to, in this little panel here, um, which I'll move up so you can see it a little bit better, the library panel. This is where all our um, bits of art are kept. So as a, there's a monkey sailor, there's um, the kingdom sailors, that's the Iron Republic. I'll click on one of them, that's Legion. And of course I did this in another video showing off all the animations and so on, but these all live inside the uh, the Flash project and um, they're all keyframe animated up here. So I can kind of go show you the different frames of animation. I can click on a head, I can go into the head and change the color of it if I wanted to. If I wanted to make that green, I could, but I'm not at the moment anyway. They're all being drawn. So all the sailors are in the game um, inside the various things. And here we have all the icons. I'm basically just randomly going through the file now and just showing you like, Here's what all the icons look for the game. And they, um, they're they all inside a, um, a box mask. And they'll appear in the buttons. So there's a bunch of them there. There's actually uh, 210 of them with a few blank frames, but there are our characters and so on. Um, what I'm working on right now is actually the settings panel. So um, that's the background for the settings panel. I assemble everything um, in layers, Flash is really good for saying, you know, grab a movie clip. Uh, you can have a text layer here, turn your text on and off. I can change the text here if I wanted to write something different. Um, turn that on and off. Behind that is a graphic of a um, parchment scroll, which I use throughout the game. I've got various sizes of it. What I can do is I can um, go to press the edit button and load this up in um, Photoshop. And if I wanted to, you know, shrink that in half, I could do that, then save it and bring it back in and it will be edited. Oh, that's the current uh, image that I'm using for um, the various game settings. There's our pirate captain and so on, but we don't need that at the moment. We delete that. There's our title screen I'm working on. But yeah, that would edit this. 
And we also have another moving clip which I'm working on. That green bar is actually a mask and that will mask out um, images that go inside that. Flash is a tool that is no longer used widely for making games, but because I started this in Flash about four years ago, I'm finishing it off um, using Flash. And when I say Flash, I mean uh, Adobe Air and Starling, which is a graphics accelerator framework that runs really fast and runs on mobile and Steam and so on. It's made using Flash, uh, but it's a lot better than your average Flash game. So um, it's about as good as Flash can get, even though um, it's no longer popular anymore. After this game, I'll be moving over to Unity, as I've mentioned in um, several videos, just because it's really hard to beat Unity and Unreal and game engines like that, just for the amazing particle effects and, and crazy stuff you can do with it and lighting. And it's just, it's gone, gone so much further along than Flash has. Anyway, so this is our options menu, and I just have all the different, how many pirate captains are in the game, um, game difficulty settings size of the ocean and I can just kind of add these to the timeline here and then um, I'll save that and what I'll actually do is I'll just we'll load up um, where we are with the world settings menu so you can see it so I press um, control enter to compile and when you compile you wait you tend to wait depending on the speed of your computer um, and the size of the project uh, I generally wait about um, 15 or 20 seconds for it to load up um, while it just sort of packs everything together all the code and assets um, here we are, and that blue background is, means that it's in a debug mode for me. There's our um, e-games and whiskey barrel logos. This is what players will see at the beginning of the game. And of course the title screen. I've turned off the sound and music because when I'm actually developing the game, I like to have um, my own music playing and you do get sick of the sound and music of your own game. Uh, I'll turn it back on when it's time to um, actually you know, create new sound effects. So yeah, here it is in the little window. Um, we're gonna go new game, select the character. I've built all these screens. Um, you can see here, if I go like back to this, I can go to that screen itself. Um, character, which one is it? I tend to know the names of these characters, but sometimes I forget, but like all the captain portraits are, okay, no, that's actually this one. So you can see our captain portraits here. Um, and inside that movie clip, it's actually all the, the um, flags behind them. And they're all layered, that kind of thing. And you can see that is appeared here. So we have um, Wolfgang with his flag, He Chaos with his flag, and so on. We'll select a character. Um, those padlocks um, are just things that I'm working on that aren't going to be ready for the beta. Um, survival mode will be an um, add-on that will be like an in-app purchase. Um, we're going to go to custom mode now. And as you can see from that other video, um, that other image we had, um, here they all are, the different... So if we go back to world settings, we're seeing here all the different settings appearing here. And I create eight boxes for them. And I uh, put them in front of that um, little parchment background. What I haven't done here is I haven't, these aren't clickable, so you can't do anything with them. The only one that is, is the pirate captains and see how that increases the number in there. And all I'm doing is actually saying um, to that movie clip, go to the next frame, go to the next frame, go to the next frame until it gets to that and then go back to two of the first frame. So uh, that tells you how many pirate captains you, ha you have. And then they'll actually edit in my um, game object. We go back to flash develop. So I'm constantly jumping back and forward between them. Um, where is that class? Got a lot of classes, but that will edit this max captains variable right there when I edit that, which is pretty cool. Um, continue. Yeah, we'll go to that. This is a little um, game introduction that every player sees, shows you some text. And what that is, is Captain Intro, it's called. That is this text and that image. Um, that text is uh, dynamically generated from a text file, which I actually got from that Tome of Knowledge class, which we saw before. We've got a flag and some text. And then the code tells it, change that um, 
faction name to whatever the name of your captain's faction name is and change that text to that. Um, the default text is the Antares text, but we're not going to use that. And then the background is actually uh, this one here, which has a bunch of different backgrounds and so on. Um, and then that appears there with my four characters, which the code is uh, brought up. So you have your Admiral uh, and his various soldiers, the footman, the Kingsman and the Knight. Um, actually, they're around the wrong way around. He should be a Knight. He should be Kingsman. So when I find a bug like that, I um, actually go here and I go um, Admiral Robinson Army Switch Kingsman Knight names. So you're constantly finding there are little bugs and things you need to fix up in the game as you play. And this process goes on a long time, long after you've even released the game, you still find, oh, this needs to be fixed up or that needs to be altered or there's little balances and bugs that you need to sort out, that kind of thing. Um, it's a very iterative process and that's why you see so many games come out and they have really long patch notes because they're constantly finding new things that they hadn't noticed before, even though they've played the game and tested it a million times. Um, and of course, then that loads the game. Um, occasionally get an error like I've just got here and this tells me uh, um, property max islands not found on game data object. Um, it's an error that has only come up recently because I've been mucking around with the game setting. Um, so we can actually go to that and then um, see what the error could be. Max Islands isn't found. So what we want to do is we go public bar max islands int equals 51. That should fix that. I don't always have to go through the whole title screen, um, select the character and everything. Every time I compile a game and run it, that would be very painful, right? So what we have is we have a debug mode. Now I take this code out um, before I publish the game, but we go, Debug mode equals true. Hopefully this doesn't bug out because um, I am working some other stuff, but let's fire this up. And this, in theory, should take us to um, the actual game where we're sailing around. And I can also um, take us to the a land battle or a sea battle or the shops and everything just by changing different parameters in that um, class. So now it's loading up again. It should go straight to the loading thing. And we should go straight to, oh no, there's an error behind it. There we go. See months. So there's various things that I haven't actually um, fixed up on this term of oceans. But we can actually fix it as we go because we're, you know, we're going live right here. See monsters. And we got change that to monsters. That's a, an error that actually came up because I was renaming a variable and I forgot to rename it across multiple files. Monsters exist, see monsters exist. So we go back and then we go compile again. Most of programming is this, is um, writing a bit of code, compiling it, seeing if it works, then going back and backwards and forwards. Often you'll write code for, you know, five, 10 minutes, then compile it and then see if it'll work. Sometimes you get lucky and you can write for ages and everything just works perfectly. Other times you'll be in a very tricky thing and you write some code, you fix one line, then it goes to the next and you go to the next. Um, there we go. So the game is now loaded up and we have our character here. Um, here's uh, Port Claimer and so on. Um, we have our map, of course, all from this code here. So, you know, Term of, Term of Islands tells us where all the things are on the map. So um, these are all things you can find on each island, um, the names of the islands, the positions of the islands are in a different class for some reason. Where are they actually? I can't remember. Tome of Oceans. Um, and that's something I added just last night. So these are where the oceans live. Um, yeah, it's... These things start off small. You get, you know, one small file, two small files, then five, then six, then ten, and they start off with one or two characters drawn. Then you end up with um, the libraries. So full of information here and all assets and art and so on. There are literally there's a, thousands and thousands of images in this now, all divided into folders. You know, I can click on one of them. That's the adventure scroll. Um, and that has all the portraits for the various adventures, uh, which I drew. Um, the ambush scroll, that picture will appear when the characters get ambushed. And um, 
as you program these, you get to learn the name, learn the names of them. And I know that like, oh, I'll bring up the ambush scroll. It's called ambush scroll or the build panel. And they're all, one of the cool things with Flash, it was really good for laying things out like that. You could just go, you know, add things in like this, add in these little icons in here. It was all very modular. And I think that's going to be something that will change when I'm doing it in Unity is uh, a different way of laying things out. Um, the death image is there, that kind of thing some parchment textures that I use over and over again. Um, that's a quest panel that is no longer used anymore, actually, MacGuffin Shards, yeah. So that was from the, um, when the game was called Ships and Scooby and it was much a solo player adventure and that's now gone. But I'm gonna try and bring some of that back at some point. There's our uh, food bar with the different food items, that kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, um, we'll leave that there. That's just a little taste into how I build Sword and Sandals Pirates. It's a chaotic process. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm a very fast game developer, I think. I tend to build a lot of content quite rapidly uh, compared to some developers uh, that um, I've had experience with. But I am by no means an orthodox programmer or a, a classically trained programmer. And a lot of things I do aren't best practice. And there's things you could do better and faster. But sometimes you just got to do what you do to get it done. And um, in the end, the game works and everyone's happy. And it doesn't matter that there's some spaghetti code in there. You know what I mean? Um, if I was to do this with the best practice way, uh, this could take me eight years. You know what I mean? And I don't have that time. I want to get as much content out to you guys uh, and girls as I can because I know you love sword and sandals and I love making sword and sandals. Um, next major milestone in the sword and sandals pirates is of course the beta which will be at the end of the month and I'm only going to be giving that out to a few people there's probably about 10 or 15 people who will be on the beta uh, just because I don't have the resources to um, get that much feedback. I want to get a bit of a sample of what people think, but um, sometimes beta feedback can be overwhelming and you just, uh, you get a bit lost when you're trying to fix bugs and people are going, you know, what about if you added this? What about change this? And you can kind of doubt yourself and the vision of the game. So uh, while a beta test is important, I don't want it to be uh, too much. Then sometime in late November, uh, the game will be coming out on Steam for PC and Mac. And that's really exciting. I can't wait to get it out there um, for everybody to play and enjoy. Uh, a few weeks after that, it will be coming out on uh, iOS and Android. And that will be fun too. And I've been playing it a little bit on my um, my phone here um, on the mobile and it runs really well. I'll actually um, fire it up here for you. You can see. Um, loading it up and do, do, do. It's still the um, beta version, so you can see that the screen is blue. But just living proof that the game is working on the phone. Pretty cool. You can go to new game, create your character. Uh, you want a pretty fast phone for this. I mean, I think you really want something like a iPhone 6 or a you know, fairly nice Android phone um, to get it to run. Just because there's a lot going on. I'm trying to get... Uh, sorry, the lighting's not very good. There's a light going on in the game. Set sail. Here we are. Bam. Sword and Sails Pirates on your phone as well. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. So that is uh, my behind the scenes video for today. I uh, hope that has been a bit of an insight for you into the um, whirlwind process of uh, Whiskey Barrel Studios game development. I'm a solo developer, of course, so I do things uh, in my own way all right um hi to all new subscribers great to have you on board um if you enjoy the video like and subscribe and all that you know what you got to do um i really do appreciate having you guys with me it's really um encouraging to see so many people uh, that love the series and um i will be bringing back the games gladiator in probably december once the game's out and we'll be uh, viewing a whole bunch of new games and that kind of thing and of course, there'll be a ton more Sword and Sandals Pirates uh, playthrough videos and so on uh, once it's ready. 
All right. Um, talk to you real soon. Uh, bye for now.